often when we have a fraction, especially a fraction that we're thinking of as a ratio, we want to express it in a way that is very easy to compare. And when we want that, we often choose to express our fraction as a percent. In particular, what does a percent represent? A percent represents a fraction expressed with denominator 100. You see this cent in per cent. Right, wherever you see that word part, cent, in English, like century, you should think a hundred. And we've talked about per before. Per means for every. So per cent means for every 100. So for example, 30%, which we would read 30 per cent, means 30 for every 100. In general, any number followed by a percent sign means that number over 100. Why would we want this? Hmm. Okay, imagine you're standing in a grocery store and you're holding two packages of ground beef. Package number one says on the wrapper, one-fifth fat, four-fifths lean. The other package says, three-twentieths fat, seventeen-twentieths lean. Okay. Which ground beef is fattier? It's hard to tell, right? Because those fractions, one-fifth and three-twentieths, are hard to compare. What should we do? Well, our solution is that we want to get these to have the same denominator. And we could mess around with finding the least common denominator, but instead, we just all agree that we happen to like denominator 100. 100 is a nice big number. It has lots of factors. We'll often end up with a numerator that's at least one if we use 100 for our denominator. It's fairly convenient. So we say 1 fifth, multiply the numerator and denominator both by 20, and we'll have 20 hundredths, so 20 percent. What about 3 twentieths? Multiply the numerator and denominator both by 5, and we'll have 15 hundredths, so 15 percent. Which one is fattier? Package one is fattier. Since 20 out of 100, 20% is more than 15 out of 100, 15%. So the reason that we choose to use percents is to make fractions easier to compare.